In this video, we're going to take a look at the major definitions in kinematics. And I want you to pay particular attention to these because if you're not careful, you'll find yourself um, confusing some of the terms. For example, distance versus displacement. Or because of notation, you may confuse displacement versus position. So just take your time and be careful with it. Let's go ahead and get started. The first term that we're going to deal with is position. And position we denote with an X if it's in the horizontal dimension, a Y if it's in the vertical dimension, and we could denote it with a Z if we went into three dimensions, but we'll only ever use the X and Y dimension. And then a third way of representing position two-dimensionally is R. Now position is nothing more than where an object is located relative to the origin. Now position is a vector. Everything I'm going to give you at first is going to be a vector. Now position is a vector. And if you have a positive position that tells you that you are up or to the right of the origin. Of course it's going to be just the opposite of that if it's negative. So it's going to be down or left of the origin. Position is measured in meters. That is going to be the SI unit. Of course, it can be measured in millimeters, centimeters, micrometers, nanometers. You can measure it in any length unit, but the SI unit is going to be meters. The next term that builds up from this is going to be displacement. And displacement we denote with a delta x or a delta y or a delta r. And displacement is how far an object moves or I should say an object moved in a straight line from where it started to where it ended. Now what I mean by that is this. In one dimension it's pretty straightforward. If it starts here and it ends here then the displacement is going to be that. If it started on the right side and ended on the left side, then the arrow points in the opposite direction. Um, where this straight line business really becomes important is whenever we have objects which are moving in two dimensions. And so, for example, we might have, if this is our coordinate system right here, we might have an object which starts here and it ends here. So the position vector would be this and this. The vector that we're interested in for displacement is a straight line from where we started to where we ended. This is our displacement vector. You could say D or in this case it would be delta R. The other time it becomes important is if we have an object which is moving two-dimensionally from we'll call this point A and point B and maybe the object follows a winding path. And if that were the case the path length is going to be greater that is the distance we'll talk about that in a minute but the displacement is only that straight line distance from point A to point B. Now, what else do we have going on with displacement? Well, displacement 
is also going to be measured in meters. Again, we're looking at a length, so it's measured in meters. And the sign is going to tell you if it's positive, the sign of displacement tells you that it moved to the right or up. And if it's negative, then it moved, and this is past tense. We have a time interval now. It moved down or to the left. Displacement mathematically is defined, those three lines mean it's defined by the final position minus the initial position, or we could just write delta x. Okay, and we saw that whenever I started this. Our next term is going to be velocity, and that's going to be building up from displacement. And velocity, we write with the letter V. And velocity is how fast position is changing. The units of velocity are meters per second. Those are the SI units. You could, of course, use miles per hour um, or any other mixed unit you want. It's just got to be a length unit divided by a time unit. In this course we're almost always going to be using exclusively meters per second because those are the SI units. The sign of velocity indicates which way it is moving. So if it's positive then it's moving present tense to the right or up. And if it's negative, then it's moving left or down. You could, of course, also say north and east for positive, south and west for negative. Our definition for average velocity is going to be equal to displacement divided by time. So you may see that written as delta x over delta t. Now, anytime you see just a lowercase t without the delta in front of it, this is in reference um, to a specific point in time. But very often, we say that time starts at t equals zero seconds. And so when you write delta t, delta t is equal to t final minus t initial. And if the initial time, the start time on your watch was zero, that goes to zero and we're just left with a t. And so oftentimes we just write t instead of delta t. Most technically it is correct to write it with a delta t. So the average velocity is represented by the displacement divided by time. Now average velocity is not the same thing as instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous velocity is how fast you're moving in this very instant right now. Average velocity takes a look at what's been happening over a time interval. You know just from driving to school that there are points in your trip where you're going faster and there's points in your trips where you're going slower. But if you had to drive 10 miles to get to school and it took you one hour, then your average velocity would be 10 miles per hour. But clearly you were driving faster than that if you got onto any one of the major roadways. Just driving through your neighborhood, you would probably be driving at least 25 miles per hour at some point. So that's the difference between average velocity and instantaneous velocity. The final term we're going to look at is acceleration. And acceleration, we have to be careful because there's a little bit of confusion here. But acceleration, we use the letter, letter lowercase a, and you don't want to use a capital A. That has other meanings in physics, and so we're going to avoid using a capital A for acceleration. It has to be a lowercase a. Um, acceleration is just 
how fast velocity changes. The sine is going to correlate to a positive velocity, means that the, or I'm sorry, a positive acceleration means that the velocity changes in the positive direction. A negative velocity or a negative acceleration means that you have your velocity changing in a negative direction. What we have to be really careful with is that the positive and negative sign does not indicate speed up or slow down. Okay, so the sign alone does not indicate speed up if positive or slow down if negative. Okay, so in other words, a negative acceleration doesn't mean slow down. Now, um, there's another term that we see used in conjunction with acceleration, and that is the term decelerate. Decelerate has the specific meaning of slow down. All right, but this in no way implies that it's always positive or always negative acceleration. It just means to slow down. So, in other words, you can have a positive acceleration and be slowing down, or you can have a positive acceleration and be speeding up. You can have a positive value for the acceleration and be decelerating and you can have a negative value for your acceleration and speeding up. We just got to be careful with that. Now what's the relationship between accelerate and decelerate? Well it's kind of like the relationship between um, circles and ellipses. All circles are ellipses but not all ellipses are circles. In other words, all decelerations are accelerations, but not all accelerations are decelerations. Because you see with an ellipse, an ellipse could be egg-shaped, or if the eccentricity of the ellipse is zero, the ellipse just becomes a circle. It's a specific example of an ellipse. The circle is a specific example of an ellipse. So to decelerate is just a specific case of acceleration. I bring this term up only because we're going to see it from time to time, but we're not going to heavily use it in the course. But you have to be familiar with what it is and what it means. Now, finally, to finish off acceleration in terms of our basic understanding of it, um, the units for acceleration are meters per second squared. Those are the SI units. Now don't even bother trying to visualize what a squared second looks like because that's mathematical shorthand for saying you have meters per second per second, which is still a little confusing. So if we write this with mixed units, I think you'll understand completely what it means. So mixed units here might be miles per hour per second. So by example, you get onto the highway and you start off at 10 miles per hour. You step on the gas pedal very hard. You're trying to speed up to get into traffic that's going 65 miles per hour. Your acceleration might be 10 miles per hour per second, which basically says every one second that elapses, your speed is going to increase by 10 miles per hour. And that's what it means to accelerate. Now the last thing I want to talk about here is the scalar quantities. The scalar quantities that we're going to be working with are distance and speed. And distance is going to be the total length of the path traveled. 
And so, you know, while you might have a displacement going from point A to point B of three meters, if you decide to walk a winding path, you might find that your distance was 3.6 meters. Okay, and that should make sense. That it's going to be a longer path. But the distance is not the same thing as the displacement. If you go from point A to point B and then back to point A and the distance between these two points is 3 meters, then your displacement would be equal to 0, but the distance would be equal to 6 meters. The other term that we see that's a scalar quantity is speed. And speed is not going to be given any special letter, just like distance was not given a special letter. We don't want to use D for distance because D has already been used for displacement. And so that would be problematic. Um, speed, we don't want to use the letter S because, believe it or not, um, S is also a variable which can be used to represent displacement. I didn't write that one down, but sometimes we see it. So speed, we're not going to assign it a specific variable, and I would recommend that you might even just write out the word speed or some truncated form of it, you know, SP or SPD, you know, just so that you know exactly what it is you're looking at. But speed can take on two different meanings in physics. And you'll know what it is that you have to do almost all the time based on the context of the question. But speed can represent, by definition, the total distance divided by time, which is not the same thing as displacement divided by time, because if we look up here, if we use displacement divided by time, that's the average velocity. Here, v is equal to zero. doesn't matter what the time interval is. Yet here, the distance is not equal to zero. It's going to be a non-zero number, or it's going to be equal to some constant. Okay, so our first definition of speed is going to be equal to distance divided by time. And the second definition of speed is going to be the magnitude of the velocity. Most of the time, we're looking at definition number two in this course. Most of the time. Um, the exception to that is going to be here in the beginning while we're studying kinematics. But the magnitude of the velocity basically means this. If an object has a velocity of 30 meters per second west, then we could write that as a minus 30 meters per second as a velocity, but we want the magnitude. And the magnitude is just taking the absolute value. So the speed would just be equal to 30 meters per second. So there's nothing fancy about it. In the next video, we're going to take a closer look at acceleration and putting together all of these um, terms of kinematics, you know, the position, displacement, velocity. How does that all fit together? Uh, and so we're going to see that next time.